Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Minnesota. Soria fumbles it, and the Twins win the game. Santana off the end of the bat becomes a game-winning hero. That was last night at Target Field. The Twins with plenty of heroes in the night. Starting down by a run, Oswaldo Arcia got it all going with a double. Eduardo Nunez knocked him in to tie the game and scored the winning run. Kurt Suzuki delivered on a ground ball. And the winning run scored as Danny Santana rolled one up the third base side. And the Twins scored two in the ninth to beat the Rangers 4-3, to three, square the series at a game apiece, snap a four-game losing streak, and set the stage for the third game of this series tonight on a beautiful night in Minneapolis. Joe Saunders goes for the Rangers tonight, just his second start of the season. Kyle Gibson goes for Minnesota, 4-4 four and four on the year, but 3-1 and one here at Target Field. Nothing but sunshine tonight with Tim Lauder. I'm Anthony LaPanta. The Twins try to continue some home field magic. Back in 2010, when this ballpark opened, they were the best home team in baseball. Hasn't been the case for the last three years. 50 games under 500. Suddenly this year, they look very comfortable at Target Field. And, and you know what's no secret, Anthony? The Minnesota Twins have to be better at home than they were the last couple of years. And how do you do that? Well, you create some excitement by winning some ball games at home. You create some excitement by winning some one uh, one run game. And you create some excitement by having some emotion about some of those wins that you've had in a walk off fashion. And certainly if you do that, the people will come out and watch you play. Twins have won close games. They've won them in dramatic fashion. Three walk-off wins in their last eight at home. And, you know, they've done it, Anthony, with the, somewhat of a different cast of characters. Parmalee, Hicks, and last night, Santana with the even the slow roller up the line. And so an opportunity to win that type of a game in a walk-off fashion and to be able to shake hands, but to be able to show the fans the emotion that goes into winning at home. You hope, you just hope that it can be infectious and they can continue to win that kind of, uh, these kind of games at home in the future. If they're going to be able to continue it, it falls on the shoulders of tonight's starting pitcher, Kyle Gibson. We'll have more on his roller coaster season with Dick Kramer and Burt Blylevin next.
Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And by the Dodge Memorial Day event. Come in for great deals. Last night, the Twins ended a losing streak. Tonight, they hope to start building a winning streak. Kyle Gibson gets a start for the Twins on a very a good and familiar mound for him. He's pitched very well in his home park, ballpark so far this year. And it's a beautiful night for baseball at Target Field. Glad you're with us. Dick and Burt with you for game three with the Texas Rangers. The Twins hope to get to the 500 mark here tonight and then stay above it. And they can do that as long as they get consistently good starts. And that's been the issue for Kyle Gibson. Some good ones and some others not so good. Yeah, you just don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get the good and the bad so far here in the month of May in Cleveland. It was a good one. He got a no decision. Twins won in 10 innings, a one nothing ball game. Then he went to Detroit. He gave up six runs, a big blow off the bat of Miguel Cabrera. A big three-run home run. And then here against the Seattle Mariners, outstanding. Ended up getting a win in that ball game. And then his last start in San Francisco. Gave up two home runs. He's only given up three all season long, and two of them coming in his last start. So hopefully he's had a good, bad, good, bad. This will be a good one. And he'll hope for some early run support. Oswaldo Arcia stung the ball twice last night. He's in the lineup again tonight, hoping to provide some pop for the Twins. Santana, who finished the ball game last night, a late addition to the lineup tonight. Aaron Hicks scratched because of a bad back, and Santana will take over in center field. Eduardo Nunez got the game tying hit in the ninth inning comeback last night. He's in at third base. Frustrating ball game last night for Ron Washington. The uh, Rangers have had a tough time stringing wins together. They thought they had done that last night. And they'll try to start a winning streak tonight with this Menards batting order. Shinsu Chu, followed by Elvis Andrus, Mitch Moreland, Adrian Beltre, 
Alex Reyes, Michael Joyce, Leonis Martin, Robinson Chirinos, and Luis Sardinas. And on the mound tonight, it'll be 26-year-old Kyle Gibson making his 10th start. This is his first career start against the Texas Rangers. And we showed you his great numbers here at home in four starts, three and one, very good earned run average. Uh, he's a sinker slider type pitcher. He needs to keep the ball down and will hopefully get a lot of ground ball outs here tonight. First man he will face, Shin Su Chu, the leadoff man for the Rangers. Dropped by Escobar. He picks it up and throws him out. And there's one ground ball out right there. Escobar to his left, a hot ground ball. He was able to knock it down, make the play. Northland for defense for the Twins. Josh Willingham is out in left field. Aaron Hicks was in the lineup. Back tightened up over the course of batting practice. He was scratched. Santana gets center field. RC gets right field. Nunez, Escobar, Dozier, Maurer around the infield with Suzuki doing the catching. One down, Elvis Andrews, the batter. Down and away, ball one. Last time Gibson pitched here, he pitched against the Seattle Mariners. He worked seven very good innings. And he gave up 13 ground ball outs. And that's what Gibson's good at. When he keeps that ball on the ground, he will pitch well. Good sinking fastball, hard slider. He'll run that fastball in on right handers too. Right handers hitting only 195 against him. You can see the sink on that ball and now it's one and two. But the pitch before that was called at the knees. It just seems like on the, those days when Gibson. Has had some difficulty two pitches ago this pitch right here. He has to have. A fastball at the knees he has to get that pitch called a strike right right, right exactly. There just seems to in these games that he's had some really rough outings. He's had, and they say that's the key against a sinker ball. You got to get him to bring the ball up. Well, one of the ways to do that is to not have the control to get those strikes called at the knees. You have to keep hitting that spot, and Suzuki needs to help him out behind home plate. There like it is. That. Good sinker right there. Gibson picks up the strikeout. Gibson, not much of a strikeout pitcher. 25 strikeouts in 50 innings coming into this ball game, but good downward plane right there. That, that's an outstanding pitch. Pat Hoberg, the home plate umpire. Jerry Lane, the crew chief at first. Mike Demiro, Mike Esterbrook on the bases. Two down. Mitch Moreland, the batter. And when I talk about downward plane, Gibson at six six can create that. Getting ahead in the count. Breaking ball there for a called strike. And you create that downward plane by not rushing on that mound, making sure you stay over that pitching rubber, and then drive toward home plate like that. Right handers hitting only 150 coming into the ball game. Left handers hitting 295. Giving up three home runs, one to a lefty. Liner Escobar reaches to his left and snares it to end the first inning.
eighth inning, but Eduardo Escobar made a couple of nice plays. Darton Heyer picking up career win number 60 against the Rangers. And the Menard batting order for game three. Brian Dozier leading off. Joe Maurer in second. Trevor Booth, the DH tonight. Oswaldo Arcia, Josh Willingham, Kurt Suzuki, Eduardo Nunez, and Escobar, and then Danny Santana again inserted in what was Aaron Hicks' spot. And 32 year old Joe Saunders coming in, making just his second start. Was activated here this afternoon. He started a ball game in Tampa back on April 4th. In the fourth inning, Evan Longoria hit a rocket up the middle. They ended up uh, having a fracture in that left ankle area, and he was put on a disabled list. In his first season with the Texas Rangers, fifth different organization to pitch for at the major league level for Joe Saunders. Brian Dozier will lead things off, then Maurer and Pluth. Whack down the line, a fair ball. We've seen Dozier do that regularly, trying to jump on that first pitch. And he cracks a double right over the third base bag. We have seen Dozier so quick inside. Saunders, just like Gibson, he's a ground ball pitcher. He'll get a lot of ground ball outs, but here, fastball up and in. And Beltre has nothing to do but watch it. Get out of the way, Mr. Umpire. Mike Estabrook almost took it off his uh, butt box. They got him in the pants. Slowed it down a little bit. Would have been a double in any case. Joe Maurer with Saunders immediately, almost immediately, pitching out of the stretch. Over the inside corner, a strike. Twins have seen a little bit of Saunders, not a lot of bad bats for the Twins against Saunders, mainly when he pitched for the Angels. Mauer against Saunders in their meeting, just one for 11, but that one hit being a home run. Different alignment than they had last night with right hander Scott Baker pitching, where they had the right fielder playing almost in front of the stand up to cancer sign in right center. Choice is playing deep and pretty much straight away to right. Two strikes now to Mauer. Yeah, good heart breaking ball. Saunders with a good moving fastball. That slurve type curveball that's got some good bite to it and then a very good changeup in his 10th season at the major league level. Making a six career start against the Twins. There's Choice right there, kind of fighting the sun. Out in right field. Down and away, one and two. Saunders making his sixth career start against the Twins. He's three and two. All three wins coming in Minnesota. All three wins coming at the Metrodome. His first time pitching here at Target Field. Capper right side. Dozier will advance. Maurer retired. One away. On a quality out. Moving Dozier over to third base. Play it when Blue gets to the plate. First of all, their Northland Ford defensive alignment. Chu in left, Martin in center, Choice in right. Beltre, Andres, Sardinas, and Moreland, the infielders. Chirinos behind the plate. Trevor Plouffe, the designated hitter. Middle of the infield playing back, so they will concede a run if Trevor can hit a ground ball back up the middle. Foul back one strike. Bluth, the team leader in runs batted in. With uh, Chris Colabello being sent down. Colabello's, or excuse me, Bluth's 30 leads the team. Then Suzuki with 27. And Dozier with 26. One strike to Trevor Bluth. And now a ball.
unlike Scott Baker who was added to the team and eventually the rotation Saunders was there at the outset and then in his first start for Texas got smoked by the line drive Bert spoke of fouled away again one and two. Saunders not really a strikeout pitcher over his career. He's pitched over 1,300 innings at the major league level. He's averaged about 5.2 strikeouts per nine innings and just under three walks per nine. One and two. In the dirt, blocked by Chirinos. Saunders has become, I think it's fair to say, a Jamie Moyer, Mark Burley type of guy, right? Finesse yep. tries to get you to chase out of the strike zone. Made the All Star team when he was with the Angels back in 2008 when he won 17 ball games. And Blue strikes out. There's that good change up right there. Great location. Down and that'll leave it up to Arcia to take advantage of the Dozier double. It's not only a good changeup, it's a location. Look at that little sink down and away. And Bluth swinging over the top. We've seen a little uh, two out hit right here. Lost in the uh, dramatics of the ending of the game last night was the fact that the Rangers had opportunities they did not take advantage of. And a leadoff double in the fourth and didn't score. A leadoff triple in the ninth and didn't score. See if Arcia can make sure Dozier's double matters. There's a swing and a miss, one strike. To take advantage of these opportunities, particularly when your lineup is struggling and the other team's giving you a run if you can just put it in play on the ground. Credit Saunders, he made some good pitches on Trevor Ploof after Joe Maurer was able to get Dozier over to third. Swing and a miss by RCN on another breaking pitch, 0 and 2. Why would you not throw another one here after those two swings by Arcia on that hard breaking ball? On our Twitter player, oh. you might have heard Tom Bernanski in the background saying, okay, now put it in play. Put it in play. Going back to another slider. And Arcia waves at three of them, and Saunders comes off the mound in a tie game. Field are great to have fun with your church, school, sports team, and family. Groups of 25 and larger qualify for special ticket discounts and can reserve seats without a deposit. Organize your group outing to a Twins game today. Call 833 Twins. Ask about group outings at Target Field. And if you pick tonight to come to the ball game with a group, you picked a great night. Could you ask for better weather than what we've had here today? Temperatures in the low 80s, low humidity, not a cloud in the sky. 1 and 0 to Adrian Beltre. 
And now two and up. And no weather, no better weather to show off this beautiful stadium. Yep. Told somebody with the Rangers earlier today, days like this really made it hard to go inside the Metrodome when you knew it was so nice outside. And I'm saying that as someone who got paid to go there. The ball hit to left. Willingham back makes the catch. Another well hit out, one down. And that'll bring up Alex Rios, who's been swinging a red hot bat. Yeah, one of the hottest hitters in baseball right now, Alex Rios. So the MOA scouting report for Gibson that I feel start him down and away. That's Gibson's strength. Get ahead in the count. You have to run that fastball in on his hands, and that's what Kyle Gibson can also do. We saw him do that in, in the first inning, and then change speeds with the slider and change it. And there's strike one. Down and in, but a called strike. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot, you know, these Texas Rangers have not faced Gibson before, so if Gibson can hit his spots, he should pitch well. That's a good pitch right there. And strike two on a check yep, swing, on two. That's the one I was talking about, running that good two seamer hard in on Rios. Watch the movement of this pitch right there. That's nasty. Now Suzuki sitting away. Wow. That's uh, that's carving up a hot hitter right there. That is something that you want to look at over and over. If you're struggling a little bit, you take a video and you keep it right here. Get strike one. Able to do that. And then watch the movement on this strike two. Reels unable to hold up. And then the slider away. Second strikeout for Gibson. Michael Choice takes strike one. The strike to ball ratio even when Gibson was winning early and he won his first three starts the strike to ball ratio was not ideal for him. Ninety seven pitches in his season opening game just fifty three strikes. Hundred pitches in his second game fifty six strikes. Well, that's kind of when he was a little bit I mean he walked eight batters in the first two starts remember his walk total was way up there. You know, trying to maybe do a little bit too much. Now he's in that rotation. This is his 10th start. Starting to relax a little bit. It's also a little bit more than 33 degrees, too. That, that's yeah. got to help. Yes. Well, over his last four starts, some good, some bad. He's walked only six over the last four starts. Two strikes to choice. Another line drive. This one out of the glove of Nunez. A choice will reach. Hit Nunez right in the middle of the glove, but it didn't stay in there. We saw some great pitches to Rios, but then when you leave a ball up, and you're going to see how Ch Choice is be able to hit this ball sharply. Suzuki sits away. Look where that ball is. Now high, and at almost spinning with no movement on that pitch. And Nunez uh, almost caught that ball, but it's the first hit for the Rangers. Leonis Martin, the batter. Down and in, ball one. Martin in his fourth season with the Rangers. Last year played 147 ball games, hit 260. A little bit of pop, eight home runs last year. He has two so far this year. Two and oh. Now this is where you have to trust that two seamer down and away. You have to be able to throw it for a strike. Sure Suzuki's just going to move a little bit, not much, outer half of the plate. There he is. To left, Willingham chasing it. One hops the wall on his way to third is choice. They're going to wave him around. Oh, they're going to hold him. And it's a double to the opposite field by Martin. And Willingham ended up playing that smartly because he was able to keep the run from scoring on the hit. Also, when you fall behind an account, two and zero oh, like Gibson did, you're trying to come in with a strike. That's a hitter's punch, and that's exactly what Martin was looking to do. 
Take that pitch the other way. Good job of Will by Willingham getting that ball in quickly. And Gary Pettis, the third base coach, you can see him holding choice up right there. Second and third, two down. The Rangers have done a good job in this series getting two out hits. And they have a couple of them here in the second, but still no runs on the board. Robinson Chirinos. Inside ball one. Uh, Chirinos in his second season with the Rangers. Not much of a offensive type player. But we said that about uh, Chris uh, Jimenez, and he's had two very good games against the Twins. Well, now Gibson falls behind him 2 0, and Suzuki will come out for a talk. Everything was going great until Choice got the single out of the glove of Nunez. I think the biggest thing for Gibson is that he has a good sinker. You can't force a sinker. You're not trying to throw it too hard to make it sink. It's got to come fluid. It's got to come natural. Sometimes it looks like he tightens up. He wants to make that perfect pitch rather than trusting that good moving sinker down to get ahead in the count. Like he did to Rios. Strike at the knees. Gibson making just his 20th major league start. He made 10 last year. This is his 10th here tonight, this season. Swing and a miss. You have to remember, as much as he's been a regular in the rotation this year. A year ago, he was still about a month away from being called up. And so he's experiencing a lot of things for the first time. He only hopes to strand a couple of runners here in the second inning. And he pitches out of it. The Rangers do get two, two out hits, but they needed a third. And Gibson wouldn't give it to him. Cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. You said he really didn't have much last night, but still he gave the Twins seven innings, three runs allowed. Yeah, another quality start. He's the second month of May among uh, starters in terms of lowest ERA and tops in the American League. Hasn't walked a man now since well, 44 and a third innings ago. Brad Ratke. Two and a fraction inning was the longer, the longest walkless streak. Strike one to Josh Willingham. Yeah, that's a control that Ratke had. Did you see the top five? He's three times he's on that list. Willingham, Suzuki, and Nunez. And 
and missing one and one. Willingham taking a look at a couple of pitches. See if Willingham can bust out tonight like Arcia did last night. Side two and one. You know, one thing that Arcia had that Willingham didn't have is a lot of at bats. Arcia had 50 more at bats down in Rochester than Willingham had. So it might take Josh a little bit longer to find that groove. You know, I was talking to him before the ball game. There were two pitches last night. He said, I have to hit those balls out. Those are home run pitches to me. And the timing just isn't there, but it's going to get there with the help of Tom Bernanski and, and the way that Willingham works. Half foul, three and two. He is so strong. And the last thing Josh wanted, of course, was to follow up an injury plague 2013 with another injury marred season. There really not much he could do about it. Justin Masterson hit him in the wrist with a pitch. Three and two to Willingham. And he takes ball four. And that's always a good sign when a guy like Willingham can take ball four. Good take right there. Saunders walks his first batter. Who is the only man to manage the Twins and the Rangers? That's our carsoup.com trivia question. This should be the easiest one that we have all year long. And you never played for him in either spot, did you? No. Here's Kurt Suzuki. Okay, Suzuki's just two for 32 in his career against Saunders. Showing bump taking ball one. But one of the two was a home run. And Suzuki's hit left handers well this year. So that and the fact that Ron Gardenhire wants Hosmiel Pinto to catch Samuel Deduno tomorrow. That and the fact that Suzuki went to him last night and said he wanted to play again tonight, even though he didn't have good numbers against this guy. You have another dap? He's going to get two hits tonight. Okay, good. I hope so. Thanks for strike one on one. Involved in one of the more controversial plays the Twins have been involved with this year. See what he's done against lefties. It was Suzuki's ground ball hit the Beltre in the ninth inning last night that led to all the confusion, controversy. Ultimately, it led to the game winning run for the Twins. Outside, two and one. Well, Beltre's won three gold gloves over at third base, and I'm still surprised he just didn't pick up that ball and throw it to first. They said it happened to him about three weeks ago, and the runner ran, ran right into him, and he tagged him out. Where Nunez went around him. Foul back, which legally he had to do. You have to give the fielder the opportunity to catch the ball, and Beltre was coming in. Or Nunez could have did what Elber Bell did one time, when a second baseman caught the ball, and then he just knocked him into center field. Two and two to Suzuki. Took a call, third strike. And Suzuki's had his problems against Saunders. Two for 32 now, but that's just the second time he struck that's, out. That's a nasty pitch right there. Good fastball in. And this is a play last night. And they said because Beltre really didn't try to first try to tag him. You can see Beltre kind of was surprised and all, you know, ball kind of brought him to his knees and he never really tried to tag at Nunez right off the get go. Well, it was an acrobatic that's what, that's slide. That's what Jerry Lane said. Right. It was an acrobatic slide by Nunez and a smart play. Throw to first. I mean, Nunez was obligated to peel off. And get away from the fielder. That's it's I, the, the analogy I made to somebody today was it's like a coverage and covering a, a punt in football. Guy calls for a fair catch. You have to give him room to make the fair catch. Similarly, you have to give the fielder room to make the play. That's down the line and a fair ball. Willingham round second on his way to third. The carom comes to chew, and the Twins get their second double right down the left field line. Well, it looked like the changeup that stayed up, and Nunez 
Got the barrel of the bat out quickly, just like Dozier did to lead off the bottom of the first inning. Nunez with his first double. In a Twins uniform. Breaking ball, I believe that was, and it just kind of hung right there. Down that left field line. Chu plays the carom, but runners at second and third with one out. And now Escobar. And now the Rangers will shorten the infield up a little bit with Willingham at third. Escobar takes a strike over the inside corner. Eduardo hitting an even 300 as a right handed hitter. 356 from the left side. Nine hits in 30 at bats as a right hander. Check swing and a foul. 0 oh and 2. Sanders got out of the first inning jam with a big strikeout of Pluth for out number two. He's already got three strikeouts. And he's only faced seven batters. Well, first two fastballs on the inner half of the plate. Escobar trying to battle of an 0-2 hole. Good time call. Down and in. One and two. Three pitches middle in so far. Now remember he did that to Pluth, and then Pluth struck out on that good changeup down and away. That landed five feet in front of the plate. That's a tough block for the catcher, but he made it. Still, I can see the ball mark in the dirt that made it about. Two feet out of the grass. Well, you want to keep the ball down, but not that far down. No, you know, right at the knees. It's actually, yeah, as it crossed the plate, that was a good pitch. Two and two to Escobar. Tony Oliva probably would have hit a double on that pitch. Back to Saunders, and now Willingham hung out to dry. And they're going to run him all the way back. They'll tag him out, Escobar at first. So now runners at first and third with two down for Danny Santana. It looked like he went back inside and left it out over the plate, but right back at Saunders. And then the uh, little pickle that gets in that Willingham, and he's tagged out. You saw Nunez doing a little dance at third base. Now he's at third base. Talking to Beltre, Beltre is probably saying, "You're over here again." So now first and third, and Danny Santana, who was the hitter who hit the spinner off the end of his bat to Soria, who couldn't handle it, and that finished the ball game last night. The last run scored on the Santana at bat. Now he can drive in the first run tonight. Santana, a natural right-handed batter, and talking with Tom Bernanski, the hitting coach, before the game today, he thinks that eventually he'll be a better left-handed hitter. He needs to tighten up his strike zone a little bit from the left side of the plate. Four hits and six at bats as a right-handed hitter. And Saunders, very good pickoff move. So he's someone that. Uh, over his career, he's done a good job of holding on runners. He's had 26 career pickoffs over at first base. Want to know to Santana? Another throw to first. Oh, 
Homer's career there's been 83 stolen bases if the Twins are thinking running right here but also 53 have been thrown out. Change up away 2 and 0. Mentioned Santana four hits six at bats. He's a right handed batter. He's gotten a hit every time he's put the ball in play. The other two at bats are strikeouts. Let's hope he puts the ball in play. 2 and 0. 3 and 0. Dozier on deck. Santana has drawn three walks. And 32 at bats. Likely given you know, the take sign here. He takes a strike. The only start for Joe Saunders again came back on April 4th in Tampa. He worked three and two thirds innings. There are the splits between right and left handed. Good, good for both sides of the plate. He gave up five runs, four earned to the Rays. He walked three in that ball game, struck out four. So have some speed on the bases. Three and one to Santana. Three and two. Saunders got that fastball up to 92 miles per hour. Runner at first. Escobar will take off upon delivery. Over the end you know, he showed Tom Bernanski and he is pulling out a sheet of paper. And you know, in today's game, they break down what does a pitcher throw 3 2? Does he go to that change up? You know, or does he challenge you with the fastball? They break it down pitch by pitch now. Another 3 2 coming to Santana. Piece of it. Didn't hit it hard, but with a lot of spin on it. And Joaquin Sorry on that big slow curveball had to be a lot of spin on that ball. Sorry had a tough time, and once he bobbled it, Twins won. Then the abuse started. I'm telling you, Garcia wanted a body slam him. Another 3 2 to Santana. Hold back. Piece of that 92 mile per hour fastball. Ron Gardner said today he did not think that Soria was distracted by Santana's speed. He thought it was simply a matter of all the spin on the ball. It was a curveball to begin with. It started with some spin, and then Santana hit it right off the end of the bat. Fourth 3 2 pitch. And he takes ball four. Late appearance by Santana. The number nine batter walks and they're full up now for Dozier. After three good fastballs, Saunders tried to change up and missed down. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, out to uh, give Saunders a little rest right here. 60, 26 pitches so far this inning. And it's an opportunity for you now to tweet your photo using hashtag NorthFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Yeah, Maddox was starting to go back to the dugout on a quick trip to the mound, and then he went back and he probably said, Oh, yeah, by the way, don't throw Dozier a fastball in. Now, did they change the rule? Because there have been managers who have been trapped with that and have had to take a pitcher out. He came off the mound and walked uh, back. He, he didn't completely come off. He kind of turned, was going to head back, and then he spun around again. Don't you have to leave the uh, yeah. third area? Dozier cracked the first pitch he saw into the left field corner for a double. Up and away ball one. Turned him off with a changeup. One 
1 and 0 to Dozier. Tapper up the line foul. One and one. Those has driven in 26 runs. He's played in every game so far for the Twins. This is game number 50. Foul back. Just beneath us. One and two. Twins trying to get something out of this. We talked from time to time about stressful innings. Innings where a pitcher has had to throw his pitches under duress. Pretty much everything Saunders has thrown here in the first two innings has been under duress. Blocked by Chirinos. Two and two. And he wants to make sure he resolves this jam on this pitch. He doesn't want the count to go full. Serino's doing a good job of utilizing that chest protector and deadening that ball. 30 pitches already in this inning. Mauer on deck. Off the plate, three and two. He threw a changeup in the vicinity of the one that struck out Ploof. That one just off the plate. Carousel will start with the bases loaded, two outs and a full count. Everyone will start running. Are you ready? We're going to start running here. <laughs> a drive to left center field, measured by Martin, and he makes the catch on a warning track. The twins leave the bases full. In the second. By Century Link, your link to what's next. By Northland Ford, visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealers today. And by Grand Casino, the best stories start here. Kyle Gibson to Luis Sardinas in the first pitch over a strike. Sardinas getting the start at second base, just 20 years old. Ned Odor been playing second base for the Rangers. Yeah, and he's also only 20, so a couple young kids getting an opportunity to get some major league at bats. One and one. Sardinas, Chu, and Andres in the Texas third. The changeup floats over for a call strike. Right. 
Seen a lot of that with Gibson. What do you think about that? He's shaking off the veteran catcher Suzuki a lot. Well, hey, you know, a catcher is can only suggest. Gibson kind of gets that ball back, and the way I know I was, it just you know what you want to throw, and you hope that your catcher and you are on the same wavelength, more or less. It was hard for Tim Lager. We just didn't see eye to eye about anything. <laughs> and still don't. No. Turns him away with an inside fastball. Well, that's a good pitch right there because a sinker baller you want to pitch in that opens up the outer half of the plate. Now this is a big pitch. You don't want to go three two. There's a fastball. Make that hitter back off the plate. Let's see if Suzuki sits down and away. Maybe get a ground ball. Foul to the screen. That ball up a little bit. Now, when you were in your first year, let's say 70, 71, and let's say it was Phil Roof catching you, did you shake him off? Uh, George Matterwall was George my Matterwall. first catcher, okay. but uh, no, no, I didn't because we had a game plan, and I trusted George because he knew the hitters. Well, he's going to first, but that's just he's ball three. Come back, yeah. Ardenas thought it was a three-two count, but it was a two-two count. Bell Trey will have some fun <laughs> with that. When he gets back to the dugout, yeah. he got called up from Double A, so maybe he's thinking, "Well, Double A, you know, it's only uh, some of the games uh, are only seven innings. Yeah. And no ball, four, just three. I get the walk." Sardinus has yet to draw a major league walk. Now the left center field and Willingham runs to the gap, and he still hasn't drawn a major league walk. So Sardinus will be greeted. By among others, Adrian Beltre in the dugout, I suspect. Well, let's go back to the last pitch that Dozier just missed. He has not hit a grand slam yet in his young career, but he almost got one here right off the end of the bat. It's down the barrel an inch or two. Cool. It's probably out of here. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Rangers having fun with him. <laughs> a little fist pump by your from your manager. Ball one inside to Chu. Hey, it's worth a shot. What are they? All they can do is call you back. <laughs> That's right. Whoa. Chu ducks away from ball two. Yeah, that's more the four seam fastball by Gibson working inside the inner half of the plate. Chu's already been hit seven times this year. Watch his head as the pitch is delivered. How long he stays in there, and you see where he stands in that batter's box, very close to home plate. Two and zero, oh. and now three and zero. Oh. Chu leading the league and being hit by a pitch. Don't worry, Josh will catch him. That's <laughs> right. Three and one. Gibson uh, his own worst critic when it comes to the number of walks he's given up. Two. Nearly walked the number nine batter. Now the full count to two. Second batter of the inning. Yeah, what that does to all of three two counts. You know that just adds that pitch count gets up there very quickly. Saw that from uh, Saunders in the bottom of the second. Camper right side. Good comeback right there by Gibson. Over to Gibson and out number two. Andres coming to the plate, but first catch every strikeout, every game ender, and every history making moment on MLB Whip Around weeknights at 9 p.m. Central on Fox Sports 1. And streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I'll tell you what, as a pitcher, when you fall behind a good hitter like Chu and you come back and able to get him out by throwing strikes, you feel pretty good about yourself out there right now. Fell behind 3 0, he came back with a couple strikes and then threw that sinker, got the ground ball out. Second time Chu has hit a ground ball. Well, I would imagine it sends a message to the other team, though, too. He has to throw a strike to Sardinas, and he did. He had to throw a strike to Chu, and he did. Andrews takes down and away. Ball one. And Andrews just stands there and takes a strike. One and one. 
Andrews in his sixth season with the Rangers, two time All Star back in 2010 and 2012. Right on the outside corner with a 93 mile per hour fastball. One and two. All blocked by Suzuki, two and two. 44 pitches for Gibson. 29 strikes. Two and two to Elvis Andres. Foul back. And that's ideally what you want now, right? You want a two to one strike to ball ratio. Yeah, you'd like that, yes. Two and two with two gone on the Texas third. Foul tip. Try that sinker down and in. Andrews fouled it off. The postcard. What a beautiful sight. Taken low, and it's the third full count of the inning. Mitch Moreland on deck. Gibson coming into this game, 50 innings pitched, 20 walks. Swing the bat. He does. Hold the string with a breaking ball and got him to strike out. A pitch was thrown, but a one, two, three, third inning, and Joe Mauer will lead off the bottom of the third. Can you discover the childhood home of Judy Garland and the Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids? Visit ExploreMinnesota.com. Discover a world that's only in Minnesota. Tag your experiences with hashtag only in MN. Judy Garland of Wizard of Oz fame was born as Francis Baby Gum, G-U-M-M, -M, on June 10th, 1922 in Grand Rapids. Her childhood home. 19th century white clapboard house has been restored with original and period furniture open to public tours. And you Darvish has the ruby red slippers in the Texas dugout. Mauer on the first pitch grounds out to Sardinas, one away. Did you like that movie, The Wizard of Oz? Yes, I do. 
think everybody's seen that. Pretty good. Yeah, but it was yeah, but it was on every year. You know, when you're eight years old and you know, the flying monkeys, I'm still traumatized by those. Sorry. What about Animal House? You like that? Yes. <laughs> traumatized by that too, but for a different reason. It's Trevor Plouffe. Up and in ball one. Blue struck out with a runner at third and one out. Twins have had ample scoring opportunities here against Saunders, but they've not been able to cash in yet. One and one. And Saunders put on a disabled list. They found a stress fracture in that left ankle. They made four rehab starts down in the minor leagues. His last one. He threw 101 pitches. Triple A. Two and one to Bluff. And Evan Longoria had a line drive up the middle. Scalded. Foul. Twins have two hits and they've both been hard ground ball doubles over the third base bag. And the time Bluff hit one hard airborne and they look foul. Two and two. Now a full count with Arcia on deck. Is all about adding and subtracting, making his 223rd major league start. 89 wins, 82 losses. Signed as a free agent over the winter. Started last year with the Arizona Diamondbacks and ended up in the Orioles system. Round ball is short. Easy hop for Andres. Two down. And bring up RC. She has struck out with Dozier at third and two down in the first. Waved at three breaking pitches, none of which close to the strike zone. Let's see if he makes the adjustment right here and maybe stays off a couple of pitches just to take a look. Breaking ball off the plate. And he did. In his first at bat, he swung at that. Fastball missing 2 0. Oh. A little bit of a shift on for the Rangers. Not an exaggerated shift, but they have swung the infield around to the right side, as you see. So Venus at short right field. Fouled off the leg. More concern to Ron Washington might be the outfield shift. When Arcia hits the ball as hard as he did yesterday, there's no place to play him. They got that the back foot. Ooh. What about that back foot? Ouch. See that foul ball oh. very often. Two and one. The pad on the wrong foot. Inside and it's called a strike. Two and two. I know what Tom Bernanski about Arcia. And we'll maybe talk more about it later on. Basically, he was talking about how strong Arcia is. Popped up. And a foul ball near the Twins dugout. Beltre. There's no play. We'll try to squeeze the story in right now. You know what, Dick? That's what uh, I don't mean to interrupt. That's what we saw the first two ball games. When he hits that pop up, yeah. that baby's up there. I'm talking with Tom, and he said RC is so strong. What they're working with him on is his swing plane. You talked about his uppercut swing. That's not ideal for a home run hitter because what they want is backspin. And in the case of the drive in the ninth inning last night, Tom Bernanski said RC just hit that pure. 
hit it squarely. If he had any backspin on it at all, it will say it would have sailed halfway into the upper deck. So they're working on that with Arcia flattening out his swing plane to get a more level swing, which will make the misses carry yeah. further. We're talking about a young man just turned 23 uh, back in early May. So hopefully he stays healthy and wears the Twins uniform for a long time. And Arcia beats the shift with a little looping liner between Beltre and Andres. Uh, he fought the heck out of that pitch <laughs> inside. Talking about how big and strong he is, and maybe in, a, in his own way, he showed how strong he was. He didn't get much bat on this one. Yeah, but watch his pitch. This looked like it was right about going you know, to hit him in the twins on his jersey. Huh? Inside. Able to fight that ball off. And Beltre, of course, is playing off the line just out of his reach in the left field. Twins pick up their third hit. Garcia using a two tone bat. The point of contact might have been on the white part of the bat mm -hmm. inside the trademark. Here's Willingham. Outside, no ball one. Willingham drew a walk to lead off the second inning. Got to third base and then was trapped in a rundown on a comebacker to the mound. Have had three different runners to third base and have yet to score a run. Two and oh. Well, Josh, such a pull hitter. That's why Sardinas, the second baseman, can play where he's at pretty much up the middle. As Moreland is holding on, Arcia. Too often we see Willingham take the ball to right field on the ground that way. Taken at the knees, two and one. And therein is the wisdom with the uh, hit charts and all the information that teams digest now. If a guy's not going to hit the ball there, why put a man there? That's why Bauer's been shifted in the outfield as much as he has. Two and one to Josh Willingham. To center. Martin can't find it. Put maybe somewhat of a decoy on, but yeah. RC is back. I'm not sure what his reaction was. Well, that's, that's the old Tory Hunter deep, you know. Try to keep RC at second base. But with two outs, RC is trying to kick it off with a pitch anyway. You know, this is right off the end of the bat, right there. And hit softly in front of Martin. So Josh picks up a base hit. See the vibration of the bat. Two straight singles, but it comes with two outs here in the bottom of the third. Simply put, Kurt Suzuki is due against Joe Saunders. Two hits in 32 at bats. And he takes strike one. Through all the futility, though, Suzuki had always managed, or almost always managed, to put the ball in play until the second inning here tonight when he was called out on strikes. Well, it's only the second time in 32 at bats he struck out against Saunders, so he has been able to put the ball into play. Outside for Suzuki, just his 13th strikeout on the year. You can see the analytical information. Dave Maggot in the hitting coach has that notebook behind him. I'm glad I pitched when I did. <laughs> Way too much information. Yeah, now don't pitch in the red <laughs> to this hitter. Yeah, you, right. can, you can pitch in the yellow a little bit. Don't pitch in the red. Yeah, Dennis Llewellyn said it best in a meeting with Pat Corrales. He said, This guy's a good breaking ball hitter. And Llewellyn said, I can throw him my breaking ball because it's not a good one. <laughs> one and two to Suzuki. End of meeting. Comes have built another threat here in the third on a pair of two out singles. Inside, trying to get the inside corner with a fastball, two and two. That's where he struck him out uh, in the last inning. 
with that fastball middle in. Nunez hoping for a chance here in the third inning. Down the right field line into the seats, a foul ball. Already 69 pitches for Saunders. He's trying to get out of the third inning. 32 pitches last inning. Mentioned that to get Saunders on the roster, the Rangers sent down one of their left handed relievers, Pareda, to allow Saunders to be put on the 25 man roster. Another 2 2 to Kurt Suzuki. And now a full count, which is important because neither Arcee and nor Willingham run particularly well. Now they'll get a chance to leave early here with a full count. A little bit of a head start right here. See with runners in scoring position, Suzuki's been really good. Among the league's best. Explaining his 27 runs batted in. Drove in just 32 all of last year. Runners go. And the ball fouled away. And Saunders pulled the string right there on a changeup. Well, 32 in that second inning. 26 so far here in this inning. It's been a struggle for Saunders, but he's yet to give up a run. Ball left center field. Our team calling for it. Twins have left six men on through three innings. No score heading to the board. And merchandise at Target Field all season long. 2014 season tickets remain available for what's shaping up to be a fun summer here at the ballpark. Not every night will be like this, but still fun to be here. Call 833 Twins or go to twinsbaseball.com for more info. Mitch Moreland to lead off the four. Yep, smart enough not to do that when it's 34 degrees or whatever we had in our typical April day here. Up and away, ball one to Moreland. Moreland hit a rocket up the middle that Escobar made a nice play to end the first inning. To his left. Good sinker there by Gibson. Gibson now at 50 pitches, 31 strikes. 
lot of confidence in that changeup. That was in his start against the Indians very early in the season. He said that was his best pitch. A nasty one to Carlos Santana to strike him out in a key spot. Suzuki wanting a fastball in. He just missed two and one. Missing again. Three and one to the leadoff man. Gibson had a full count to each of the three batters in the third inning. He retired them all, obviously. But now he's got a three one count to Moreland. And full count. Beltre will follow and then Rios. Four and five batters to face Gibson here in the fourth. Fly ball center field. Santana going back, slamming on the brakes, and making the catch. One away. And Aaron Hicks came up with some stiffness in his back. Don't know if it's the result of his great catch last night or not, but Santana finding out about an hour and a half before game time that he was going to start in center field. Sometimes that's the best thing too for youngsters. You know, you don't think about it. You come to the ballpark to relax and maybe be pinch, you know, pinch hitter late in the ball game. But now you're in the lineup. Hey, let's go get him. Beltre lined out to Willingham his first time up. Mighty swing and a miss. Sam Fold has had a couple of good days in a row. He was sent to Pittsburgh to be examined, and uh, if all goes well, we might see him go out on a rehab assignment. Popped up back and out of play. Just beneath us. And as we've established over the years, there not much. isn't much that is beneath us. Two strikes. And time home. They respect this man's power right here. Adrian Beltre. Fastball just off the plate. Well, Gibson getting ahead of Beltre here, 0 and 2. A good chance to resolve this at bat without a deep count. Dave Magadan talking to Elvis Andres. It's a foul ball. Beltre in his fourth season with the Rangers, 17th Major League season, came up with the Dodgers, and he signed that big contract with the Mariners, where he was there for five years. He went to the Boston Red Sox for a season. Now in Arlington, Texas. Off his leg. And I shorted him. I said he was a three-time Gold Glove winner. He's actually a four-time. Rawlings Gold Glove winner at third base, a three time All Star. He survived his time in Seattle when you know, I think a lot of people thought he was at kind of the end of the road by the time he left Seattle. An aging third baseman who didn't have good years at all in Seattle. One and two. Bouncer to short, good pitch by Gibson. Escobar to Mauer, two down. He's reestablished himself as uh, one of the best third basemen in all of baseball to the point where he's starting to get some whispers about Hall of Fame candidacy whenever his career ends. Closing in on 400 home runs, closing in on over 2,500 hits. You mentioned the defensive prowess, at least late in his career, maybe more so in Texas than any place else. He's kind of been the unnamed captain of this Ranger team. Certainly a leader. Rios takes a strike. Let's take a look at uh, Rios, uh, who's hit very well here at Target Field. His hot zone, and you can see down and in. Swing and a miss. Gibson's struck him out once and gotten ahead here on a total of five pitches. 
Two good sliders so far in this at bat by Gibson. And I could just see you in the pitchers' meetings going over that, that <laughs> chart. There's a hit the blue spot, Bert. Throw the ball in the blue spot. Don't they know I'm colorblind? Well, there's Gibson. He went for that. Went uh, for the blue spot yep. there. After a couple of sliders, there's that blue spot. Problem is, you miss a couple inches over, and, and it's in the red. <laughs> and you miss up a little bit. I think it's really red if you throw it right down the middle. Not, uh, not much uh, room for margin of error there. Left side, Escobar backhands, plants, fires. Not in time. Rios beats out a two out single. All three Ranger hits have come with two outs in an inning. Well, you can't play it any better than Escobar did right there. Rios and his speed just beat it out. A breaking ball. And Rios hitting it on the ground, but found the right spot between third and short. Escobar going to his right. And now the grass shows off that good arm, but Rios beat it out. Michael Choice single got as far as third base after the second out in the second inning. Well, you hustle from the home to first. And that's what Reels did right there. Good hitters smell those hits. They find that extra gear. One and zero oh to Michael Choice. We keep an eye on Reels. Only three stolen base attempts with Gibson on the mound. Two of them successful. We've talked about this before. There have only been two catcher throwouts. Both by Kurt Suzuki. One of them was with Gibson on the mound. And there he goes. Suzuki's throw into center field. And now Rios will go to third. Santana's throw to Nunez. So stolen base and error on Suzuki. And Rios ends up at third base. Yeah, Gibson even did the old slide step too. Suzuki throwing this ball high over the head of Dozier in the center field for Suzuki, his third air of the year. And remember, there's two outs. Rios and his speed just sort of beat that out. He steals his 10th base of the year in 16 attempts. Focus back on the batter now, 2 0. Side and got a swinging strike. Gibson called up in late June last year. He was here for 10 starts, got a couple of wins. Two and one to choice. Locked nicely by Suzuki, three and one. Yeah, Gibson had that Tommy John in September of 2011. Number one pick by the Twins. And Suzuki doing a good job of keeping that ball in front of him and Rios at third. So as I mentioned about the strike to ball ratio, it hasn't been as good for a Gibson. Three and one. Fouled off a leg. Gibson will wear out a lot of hitters in his career because of that. You can see, I think, from the center field camera, the ball darting down and into a right-handed batter. And he'll get a lot of foul balls off of Feet, ankles, and legs. That's a fastball that starts middle in and just keeps going in right off the shin. Michael Choice. Another full count. Gibson trying to keep this a scoreless game. High full count so far for Gibson. Tapper in front of Nunez. He sets and fires and rifles his throw across to retire the Rangers. Four shutout innings for Kyle Gibson.
near the bottom of the fourth inning. America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, every game with America's pregame on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Tune in to America's pregame weekdays at 5 p.m. Central only on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your cable satellite provider, go to foxsports1.com. Eduardo Nunez, Eduardo Escobar, and Danny Santana in the bottom of the fourth against Saunders, who has pitched under duress pretty much all night long. He yeah, has. You mentioned uh, six men left on base for the Twins in the first three innings. Nunez fouls it off a leg. One strike. Nunez whistled a double down the left field line. Twins had a threat with runners in second and third and one out. But the best they could do is fill the bases in the second inning. Up and in and a foul tip call. Started his swing, stopped it, but the bat got in the way. Two strikes. Pat, Pat Holberg, the uh, home plate umpire, saying that it hit the bat. Uh, just like it uh, tipped the bat. And one and two. This afternoon in Kansas City, the Royals were swept by the Houston Astros. Final getting the score of the game today, nine to three. The Astros swept the Royals in a three game series, outscoring them 21 to 5. Hard foul. You know, not good for Kansas City, but good for Houston. Yeah. They're starting to play a little bit better, you know. They're, they've won now five in a row. They've got some good young pitching, which was the game plan all along. Right. Astros will come as part of the next homestand. The Twins get off the road. One and two. And yes, flips another one foul. We'll mention it again because, assuming you're interested in the uh, Twins uh, ball club, or you wouldn't be uh, watching tonight, and you might want to come to a game. You're just not going to have many opportunities in the next five weeks or so. This is just a short four-game homestand. Twins go on the road. New York, Milwaukee, they come home for five games, they're gone for a week and a half. They're home for four games and they're gone for another week. Foul back. And I guess it's ironic that the team is hosting the All Star game. And so you think, well, in the month of July, they won't be home. But they're home an awful lot in July, even though they're hosting the All Star game. They're gone the week before the All Star break. And then virtually the rest of the month, they're playing at home. Swing and a miss. Nunez fans to start the fourth inning. And that's strikeout number four for Joe Saunders. Saunders throwing a lot of pitches. Change up. Almost the same pitch that struck out Trevor yeah. in the first inning. It's Escobar had to come back here to the mound when the Twins had runners at second and third and one out. Saunders speared it. Trap Willingham off third. Strike on the outside corner. Escobar really opening up like he's trying to pull the ball and he flips one foul, two strikes. Haven't seen him do that very often. Try to make the adjustment. Remember his first at bat, and Saunders is busting them in, busting yeah. them in. So he tried to cheat on that one and opened up quickly. Going up the ladder, picking up a second straight strikeout. Saunders now with five in a ball. That'll bring up Danny Santana. Exactly where the catcher wanted that pitch up. And now Santana, who coaxed a walk from Saunders with two outs in the second, and then Brian Dozier hit a fly ball to end the threat, leaving the bases full. Foul back, one strike. 
Yeah, those are the only two fly ball outs so far off of Saunders. And if he has not had a strike at it, the other ones are ground ball outs. Close to getting a one, two, three inning in the third before Arcia punched a single through the left side. One and one. And now he picks up strikeouts. From the first two batters here in the fourth. Swing and a foul. One and two. And a breaking pitch in the dirt. And Santana's tagged out. Three strikeouts in a one, two, three, fourth inning for Saunders. Part the month of May, the Twins have played a lot of low-scoring ball games, and you can't get any more low-scoring than this one. Well, even in last night's ball game, you know Scott Baker pitched well for six yeah. innings, as Phil Hughes did. We are just about winding down the month of May. Neither the Twins nor their opponents have scored ten runs in a game yet this month. One and zero. Oh. So we're going to miss one and one. There's that changeup you were talking about earlier, Dick. Good changeup right there. Twins won three games in April by scoring 10 runs in a game 10 9, 10 7, 10 to 1. Comes to the right side, backhanded by Maurer. He'll make the play himself, one down. And then bring up Robinson Chirinos. This is my favorite part of coming to the ballpark and seeing this, seeing youngsters. Very likely their first game. And Name another sport you could do that. <laughs> I mean, with the ticket prices of yeah. some of these other sports. But I'm guessing you were maybe about that age and you went to your first big league game, or were you were you I was, older? I was in Canada at that age. Well, but you, what? When you were four years old, you were in California, yeah, weren't you? Six years old. All right, so you were six years old. And no, you went I, to, I went to one game, one Dodger game as a youngster with my pops. We sat up in the nose. The place. point is, it's a nice thing for a kid to oh, do yeah. the. You always remember Why the didn't first you just time. say that. You asked me, and I told you. All right, you were more like the age of the guy, like that guy right there. I was more like that young lady that was sitting next to that guy. 
one and one to Chirinos. Check swing. Nope. I mean, it sounds like a click. Like a cliche, but it's true. I remember the first Twins game I went to and seeing the green grass and seeing how beautiful it was. See, that's where my pops and I sat. <laughs> there right I am. There. That's me. Yeah. Got my shades on. Up and in, another three ball count. Now, how old were you when you first came? I would guess games? maybe seven or eight years old. By the time I got home, I had the Twins yearbook memorized. It was about a four hour drive to uh, the Twins game from Western Minnesota. Foul. I knew the names and the ages of all the, the kids of the players. I don't remember getting anything to eat. Oh, oh too bad. <laughs> Three and two. There's a looper to left. It'll die in front of Willingham for a one out sink. We probably packed a lunch, you know, peanut butter sandwiches. Sardinas, the hitter. Good poor kid. Uh, breaking ball. Lined in the left field. Sardinas with a fly to left his first time up. A fourth hit for the Rangers. Uh, there have been seven double plays turned behind Gibson so far this year. See if he can get a ground ball right here. Well, too many first pitch strikes lately, has he? Sardinas looks like a guy that can get down that line very quickly, too. Yeah, seven of 18. Eighty pitches, fifty strikes. And two and zero. Oh. Gibson again has pitched very well here at Target Field. And this is his fifth start, but the first four starts, three and one, 2.25 earned run average. On the road, not so good. Throw the first. Over the mound, how many can they get? With the lead runner, and that's all. Nice play by Dozier getting that lead man for the second out. Yeah, if that ball is hit a little bit harder, then it probably goes right to Escobar at second base, and maybe they have a chance to turn a double play. But this is kind of hit in front of the plate, a high chopper. Dozier comes in, a little backflip over to Escobar. Sardinas too quick down that line. This Get into a double play. He's already making his turn. Two down, runner at first, two the batter, a couple of ground balls, one to short, one to first. Sardinas in the minor leagues, and that's all we can go off. 75 stolen bases in 90, or excuse me, 85 attempts. So he has some speed. Excuse me, 98 attempts. 75 stolen bases. And the numbers we've given you regarding the uh, success rate against the Twins and stolen bases, Ron Washington, very well aware of that. In fact, uh, he's exploited that. Down and in, another first pitch ball. In terms of playing at home, so far so good for the Twins. They've got a winning record 13 and 12. That's one area that is. Of critical importance in, in uh, improving this ball club, playing better at home. This is a team, incredibly, that has lost 99 games at home in the last two years. The 
1 and 0 oh to Shinsu Chu. Benjo Molina, the first base coach, helping out the youngster at first. Benji could steal some bases. I think he had one or two in his career. There goes the runner. Got a great jump. Suzuki's throw in there to get in. Boy. Wow. Right on target. Suzuki with a strike. And Sardinas is thrown out at second base. And the Rangers end up sending just three men to the plate in the fifth. Field here, and we are smack dab inside the Minnesota State Lottery Winner's Circle with 100 scratch off tickets, compliments of the Minnesota State Lottery. And why not for Steve and Wendy from Crystal celebrating their 35th wedding anniversary? Now, what's been more exciting, Steve, 35 years of wedding bliss or 35 years of watching this baseball team? Well, it's a Colts call and watching Bert and Dick, but I gotta go with Wendy. Ah, love is in the air, guys. Even with those World Series, they get circled by a Hall of Famer. Now they need a win to celebrate that anniversary. Very nice. Good answer. Good answer. Very nice. Like your chances of getting to 45 and 50 with answers <laughs> like that. Happy anniversary. Absolutely. One and one to Dozier starting the fifth inning. He'll be followed by Maurer and Plouffe. A high fly down the left field line. Back out of play one and two. Third look for the Twins at Saunders, who has kept the Twins off the scoreboard. Hits are actually even at four apiece. Each team has had some opportunities to score the first run. They've so far neither team's been able to get a big hit. He threw 59 pitches in the second and third innings combined, but 13 in the first, 14 last inning. Six strikeouts so far in the ball game for Saunders. Struck out the side last inning. Foul back. We're getting peppered up yeah, here. Yeah, We've had like four balls. or five of them up here. We haven't had one in the booth. We've got some fans down here that have some terrible hands, too. But you know what? You watch that foul ball come back. It's coming back hard. Tapper right side. Sardinas gets rid of it quickly. Gets Dozier by a half step. One down. Nice play by Sardinas who was playing up the middle. Had to hustle over there and then make that quick throw. Dozier maybe trying to find that hole the other way. But Sardinas kind of filled up that hole. And then got the speedy Dozier out at first. Powers hit a couple of ground balls to Sardinas. 
saw Joe do it again last night. I don't think there's any question that he's being a little more aggressive in pulling the ball, and maybe the Ranger outfield defense is responding to that. Over the last week or so, we've seen Joe hit more line drives pulled to the right field side than normal. One and oh. This one hit to left. Chu back near the warning track and now on the edge makes the catch out number two. Bring up Plouf. Yeah, Joel for three. His first two at bats he hit that ground ball to second base. That one it just got underneath it. And hit the fly ball to left. He is just one for 13 against Sonny, so he's had trouble against the lefty. Blue full for two. Struck out on a changeup in the first inning and then hit a bouncer to short. Down and away ball one. Six in a row sent down by Saunders. Saunders, uh, when he Came in his follow through, he kind of tripped a little bit on the mound, and that's the ankle that push off foot. It had to fracture. Breaking ball rolls over the strike zone. One and one. That's into left field, a base hit. Drew's got a good arm. He'll hold proof to a single, and that'll get Arce into the play. And each team with some two-out hits, right. but they haven't come with them already on base very often. Mike Maddox to the mound. Ball just uh, not a bad pitch, but Proof you can see the extension that he had right there, lined it over Beltre in the left field. Give us a chance to maybe wrap up the discussion I had with Tom Bernanski about Arcia and other hitters too. What, what hitting coaches are preaching, and that's why they use the T. They want a flat swing plane. And Tom said, actually, the home runs are hit on what they call misses. You're not hitting the ball squarely. You're hitting it just underneath, and you're getting that backspin, which causes the ball to carry farther. You don't want to do that in batting practice because the pitches are coming in at 60 miles per hour. You want to practice hitting line drives during BP, and then as the speed of everything picks up in the course of the game, you just want to hit a little bit under the middle of the ball with a, a level swing plane. Sounds simple, doesn't it? It's not. Here's a high fly to right. He just got underneath that one. Boy, did he ever! Choice with the catch, and we'll head to the sixth in a scoreless battle.
Orders when and why the Twins use a shift, and how Jason Kubel feels about facing a shift just about in every at bat when he's batting. Leadoff man Shin Su Chu was at the plate when Sardinus was thrown out at second. He'll start over with a fresh count. Breaking ball over for strike one, a first pitch strike. Yeah, that's not a bad try of stealing second to end the uh, fifth inning because you have Chu up, and you know if he's throwing out like Sadinus was, you start the next inning with your leadoff hitter. Up. Another breaking ball off the plate. Chu in his first season with the Rangers last year with the Cincinnati Reds. Career 288 hitter coming into this year. Two and one. Change up. Good change up there. In a fastball count, Gibson pulled the string. Two and two. Slider. And <laughs> foul off a leg. You see what that slider does down and in the left. He's two. Beat that ball right into her feet. A little breaking ball down. Right off that right instep. Many hitters these days, it seems, don't wear any pads on their uh, feet or ankles. All look like it got you right where that bone sticks out on the inside of your foot. It's not sticking out anymore. It's flat. Left hit toward Willingham. He's there, one away. Well hit ball, good at bat by Chu for the first out. Andres will hit. Let's take a look at some news and notes from around the league. Chris Carter with a couple of home runs in Houston's uh, completion of a three game sweep at Kauffman Stadium. And wouldn't it be something if Justin Morneau were to come to the All Star game here in the middle of July? He's off to a great start. Yes, he is. Kobe Ellsbury, a good day at the plate. The Yankees win a ball game. Andres, slow breaking ball over for a strike. Gibson mixing in off speed stuff more often here as he starts his third trip through the Texas batting order. Yeah, that Yankee St. Louis game in the bottom of the fifth inning. One and one. Gibson missing inside with a fastball. Pitch count getting up there now with Gibson having thrown 94 pitches. Most pitches he's thrown in a game in his third start, the eight shutout innings against the Toronto Blue Jays, where he threw 105 pitches. Miss the corner, close pitch. Little three ball count. While Gibson's on the mound here tonight, Mike Pelfrey's on his way back to the Twin Cities to get a sore shoulder examined. Pelfrey, part of the original rotation this year. And a strike call, three and two. Andrew Sato was ball four. It has to be happy that even though he's had a lot of three ball counts, he hasn't walked anyone yet. Full count to the Ranger shortstop. Chopper to Escobar. Two down. And that'll bring up Mitch Moreland. If you have not made your 4th of July plans yet, you can do so here at Target Field. Here Jeter and the Yankees are coming to town. Jeter, of course, for the last time, July 3rd through the 6th, in addition to the games. And now Ron Washington is coming out because I think 
Pat Holberg has just thrown Elvis Andrews out of the game. I think he was still arguing about that 3 1 count. And on the way back from first base after grounding out, had some words with the old plate umpire. Larry Lane coming in to make sure that things don't escalate. Washington comes out after I believe Andres has been kicked out. Chandra's struck by and say something right there. No, that's not Perhaps. that's overreaction by the umpire, don't you think? I don't know what he said. Well, Oberg, a rookie in his first season as an umpire. Pitch tracks presented by Dodge. At any rate, the uh, take another look at the. Yeah, his attention was to say something to him right there. But he kept moving. I, again, I don't know what he said. But Andrews is done. One and zero oh to Moreland. Two and zero. Oh. Moreland with a liner to short, a fly ball to center. Pitch number one hundred coming. Drilled the center. Gibson fell behind, paid the price. It's a two out single. No leadoff men have gotten on tonight against Gibson. All the hits have come with at least one out. All but one have come with two outs. Tried to get, you know, down a little bit, but ball left up. And Moreland, who's had three good at bats, never Escobar took a base hit away from him in the first inning. He hit a deep fly ball in the fourth, and right there, good contact with a base hit. Adrian Beltre will hit with two gone. And hits her even at five apiece. And Gibson burns the inside corner, strike one. Side with a fastball to get a swinging strike. Tell you what, for making his first appearance against the Rangers, Kyle's done a very good job mixing in all three of his pitches at running fastball into a lot of righties, the slider away, and the changeup. To left. Down in front of Willingham for another two out single for the Rangers. And now Rios will back. Sooner or later, somebody's going to bust a bat and flop one into right field for a big hit. Rios has picked up six hits already in this series. Not a bad pitch right there. Credit Beltran going down and putting some top spin on that ball and lands in front of Willingham. Rick Anderson out to the mound. Gibson has really had a couple of successful at bats against Rios, even in giving up the two out single in the fourth. He got ahead of him quickly, 0 2. He's 
established both his breaking pitch and his fastball with Rios. This guy's a hot hitter. Yeah, he's come in in this ball game with seven straight multi-hit games. That's the most for a Texas Ranger since Rusty Greer when he was with the Texas Rangers. He's going back a ways. Jared Burton starting to get loose. Caleb Fieldbar was warming up too. There's a lefty up there too. All of that means is uh, Rios's batting average has been steadily climbing to 332 right now. He came into the game hitting third, or excuse me, third in the American League in hitting. And Victor Martinez missing inside ball one. Big battle here for Gibson. Perhaps his last of the night. Two and zero. Come on, let's go. Well, with the pitch count the way it is in today's game, you find out what's left in your tank. 106 pitches, a season high for Gibson. Previous high was 105. Pulled to third. Nunez will go to the bag. Six shutout innings for Kyle Gibson. His night is probably done. He didn't walk a man. A really good outing for Gibson. Presented by Toyota, let's go places. To find your nearest Toyota dealer and check out our current offers, visit buyatoyota.com. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by McDonald's, where right now you can score a delicious, creamy McCafe iced coffee starting at just $1.59. So far this year, Kyle Gibson has had a decision in all but one of his starts. He'd like to get a decision tonight because he's done for the night. And if he gets a decision, it'll be a W. It means the Twins will have scored against Sean Tollison. Yeah, Tollison coming in in his first year with the Rangers, last couple with the L.A. Dodgers. The Rangers selected him off waivers over the winter from the Dodger organization, making his 20th relief appearance. Hard throwing right hander, 22 strikeouts in 25 and a third innings. Rupnet Odor taking over at second. Sardinas moving over to short. And Josh Willingham will lead off the bottom of the sixth. Fastball on the outside corner of strike. Willingham a walk and a single. To be followed by Suzuki and Nunez. Six really good innings for Kyle Gibson. 
And five really good innings for Joe Saunders. Yeah. You know, he threw a lot of pitches in the second and third, but other than that, he did a good job. One and one. Battled out of them as Gibson did. Willingham season just getting started. Big swing and a foul. Like right off the end of the bat. 22. A little slider or cut fastball. All Willingham has done here tonight statistically is go one for one and his batting average has jumped 32 points. We'll get another hit and we'll see what happens. One and two to the Twins left fielder. Blasted to center. Martin back. 410 feet from home plate. One away. That's why this is a pitcher's ballpark right there. If you can make that power hitter hit it straight away, that's a long way out there to that bullpen fence. Good solid swing by Josh. He gave it a ride. Martin needed every foot of center field to make that catch. And now Suzuki, who probably realizes he'll never again be able to talk his way into the lineup against Joe Saunders. Suzuki struck out and hit a fly ball with two men on base in the third inning. We'll catch the Duno tomorrow in the series finale. One and oh. Two and oh. Only two walks in the game. Saunders issued them both in the second inning. Both Willingham and Santana. Three and O. Oh. Nunez on deck. Well, Twins in his three game series so far have not walked a batter, just one intentional walk, but that was Jared Burton back on Monday. Correa didn't walk anybody. Hughes and the bullpen didn't walk anybody. A four pitch walk puts Suzuki aboard with one out. Join the Minnesota Lynx and the Fox Sports North girls for the dads and daughters ticket offer on Friday against the San Antonio Silver Stars for $33. Fans receive two tickets to the game and a drawstring backpack. For details, visit FoxSportsNorth.com. Click on the More tab for details. Nunez with a double and a strikeout. Jared Burton starting to loosen up. Looks like he will relieve Gibson. Foul back. On strike. Collinson, 26 years old, signed by the Dodgers back in 2010 on a Baylor University, Waco, Texas. Tap to the right side. And Suzuki's retired at second base. Good play by Moreland yep. to get the lead runner. Yeah, very nice play by Moreland. Your momentum's already taking you there, so all he has to do is flip to the shortstop for the four out. With Prince Fielder no longer going to play this year, Moreland getting an opportunity, his natural position at first base. Two down, Nunez at first for Escobar. Escobar reached in the fielder's choice, struck out in the fourth.
side. Pick off to first, and he's got back. He has with one steal, one try. Good play right here by the catcher. Going behind Nunez, who has outstanding speed. Nunez coming into the year as a Yankee, 48 stolen bases in 59 attempts. Rangers paying some attention to him. Want to know to Eduardo Escobar? Swing and a miss. One and one. Slider down and in. And Suzuki talking. Fastball off the plate, two and one. Time for health injury report with Prince Fielder and the cervical fusion he had done yesterday. It'll be done until next year. Two-out hit of the night for either team. Good changeup. Escobar way out front. Yeah, on Fielder. I mean, the Rangers want him back next year. They, he's going to get twenty-four million dollars a year until 2020. Sign that big contract with the Tigers. Two and two to Escobar. Nunez goes. The pitch is inside. And the throw is right on the money to throw him out. Well, the Twins have a base stealing attempt thrown out. And we head to the seventh. Still no score.
casino story of the game a pitcher's duel here in game three. Gotta love that. Both starters pitch well. Kyle Gibson four strikeouts and six shutout innings. And for the Rangers side, Joe Saunders just making his second start. He struck out six, walked a couple in five shutout innings. Jared Burton, first man up out of the Twins bullpen tonight. Yeah, Jared looking to redeem himself better than he did on Monday night here, where he worked one inning, gave up three hits and three runs in a seven to two loss to the Rangers, making his 22nd relief appearance. And he will face Michael Choice, Leonis Martin, and Robinson Chirinos. Strike one. Strike two. Ball tapped to short. Burton just went right at him with fastballs. One away. No decision tonight for Gibson that uh, continues to pitch very well in his home ball. Had five starts. Uh, you know, no decision here tonight, but still three and one. He's yet to give up a home run here at Target Field. He's only given up three. Remember two of them coming in his last start in San Francisco. And I will bet you that the number he is going to be most satisfied with the fact he didn't walk anybody. Right. You can scatter hits as he did here tonight, six of them over six innings. You don't walk anybody, and there's a chance anyway, pretty good chance that if the hits are singles and doubles, they might not hurt you in the run scoring department. One and oh to Martin. So busted bat foul. Martin here a couple nights ago got an RBI single off of Burton. Yeah, I think Gibson's going to look at 107 pitches too in six innings. And you know, for a sinker slider ball type pitcher, that's too many pitches in, in six innings. So when you're only throwing first pitch strikes to about a third of the batters, yeah. that's going to happen, right? Yeah, nine of 23 first pitch strikes. One and one to Martin. But all in all, a very good effort by Gibson. There's a bunt and a nice one. Suzuki comes up and holds the ball, deadening the ball beautifully between the home plate and the mound. It's a bunt single for Leonis Martin. Utilizing his speed. And Suzuki deciding he has no play, and he did not. So Martin on first base, he has good speed, 10 stolen bases in 14 attempts. And of course, with Burton on the mound, clubs have run against him. But he's kind of gone to that slide step a little bit. Chirinos a single and two trips. A quick move over to first by Burton there. Not so much, I don't suppose, a question of if he's going to go, but when? How early in the count? Not on the first pitch, and it's a breaking ball, strike one. And Suzuki will come to the mound. Washington looking at the stopwatch timing Burton's first pitch to Chirinos. One thing that Jared has worked on is try to quicken his delivery toward home. Remember last year, I mean, a lot of clubs stole off of him. For Burton last year, there were 14 stolen bases off of Burton in 17 attempts because he had that high leg kick. Now he's going more of a slide step. Runner goes, Suzuki's throw. Safe at second. Well, 
good throw by Suzuki Martin and his speed steals the base his 11th of the year. Pretty good jump right there head down sliding directly into the bag. Are looking into the dugout here. That's why I think Gardner is going to come out and challenge that. Remember Dozier and play at second base when he was a runner called for an appeal. See if there's contact made right there. Before the bag uh, goes. I think they've got a chance here. Look for the movement on that angle of the, of the bag when the runners foot hit the bag and it looks like the twins might have a chance here. Well, we get the advantage of seeing it over and over like the umpires are going to be seeing Jerry Lane the crew chief with the headset on right now. It's, uh, employing their 11th manager challenge. Take a look at what they're reviewing right here. That was a quick one. Safe. Safe. The Twins haven't benefited much from this. You can't argue the appeal. The call is confirmed. So Martin picks up his 11th stolen base. We'll take another look right here. Dozier catches it and then tries to swipe him right there, but yeah. like Martin's foot was already on the bag. Two strikes to the batter with one out, the runner at second. I haven't seen Dozier come in front of the bag to take the throw very often. Right, right. Now trying to keep the runner close at second. Blocked by Suzuki. That was an important part of the ninth inning heroics last night for the Twins. Odor was so consumed with trying to keep the runner close at second, Arcia, that that opened up a little more room on the right side of the infield for Nunez, who hit a line drive, a smash, but it would have been right at where Odor would normally have been playing had he not been holding the runner on at second. Swing and a miss. And that's the second out of the inning. Got a big strikeout right there for Burton. And that will bring up Luis Sardinas. Burton going to the fastball. Just overpowering. It's up a big strikeout. Another runner in scoring position with two outs, and it will be Sardinas. To provide the first meaningful two out hit of the night. Suzuki to have a chat with Burton. Caleb Thielbar was up earlier, back up again. Burton in to face this left hander, and if the inning goes to Shin Su Chu, perhaps a pitching change. Down and away, ball one. Sardinas, a switch hitter, and only his 11th major league game. Higher average from the right side so far. Two and out. Range of the bat, a lot of injuries, but they've hung in there playing 500 baseball because of the best batting average with men in scoring position in the league. This to left, and Willingham can't get it. And the Rangers finally get a big two out hit to score the first run of the ball game. Their number nine batter. Sardinas dumps a single to left, and the stolen base pays off. Driving in just his second major league run. 
Burton fell behind an account 2 and 0. Oh, came in with a fastball that kind of tailed back over the plate. You saw that Suzuki wanted that ball away too much of the plate. Sardinas inside out swing. Picks up the first run of the ball game for either side. The singles, a stolen base, small ball. The Rangers get a run. Caleb Fieldbar will try to keep them at just the one run. Tonight, a couple of hits. Now it's up to Caleb Fiumart. Hopefully, get him out of this inning. And you can follow every Twins game with MLB.com at bat. On your favorite mobile phone or tablet, get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, the free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download at the App Store or visit TwinsBaseball.com today. Well, Caleb making his 20th relief appearance. He only pitched once. In that road trip the Twins just came from, from San Diego and San Francisco, he worked on Friday night, two innings, and a six to two loss to the Giants. Shin Su Chu is hitting the left handers about a hundred points better than right handers. So Dennis at first with two away. Far against left handers, Chu is hitting 362 with two home runs, five runs batted in. But left handers actually hitting field bar better than right handers. Left handers hitting 276, right handers hitting only 231. And it's hitting 255 overall against field bar. Breaking ball up and in, but one of the reasons Steel Bar is brought in here is because of the threat of another stolen base. We saw how damaging the first one was this inning. And tight 2 0. Gallup has only walked four batters, one intentional in 16 innings pitch. Lefty Neil Cotts warming up. Three and oh. Rugnet Odor is on deck. Side corner. Three and one to two. 
three and two, and they got a piece of Suzuki. Ball gets him right here. You see the hand. Base of the hand. A lot of padding there, too, on that catcher's mitt. Not enough. Foul back to ring two. That was off. Of course, with two down. Drew signing as a free agent over the winter by the Rangers to a seven year contract. Struck him out. Gilbar gets the job done, but the Rangers get a two out hit. And it's one to nothing, Texas. Eduardo Escobar will lead off for the Twins on the bottom of the seventh. Texas now Eduardo Escobar will lead off the bottom of the inning Fox tracks presented by carrier and a strike on the outside corner Escobar over two he was at the plate when Nunez was thrown out trying to steal a second that's hat toward the Texas dugout so both teams had the same idea in the bottom of the sixth and then the top of the seventh Get a guy on with two outs. Try to steal second, hope for a two out hit. It's just that the Twins base runner Nunez was thrown out, and the Rangers base runner was not. Two strikes to Eduardo Nunez. A foul to the backstop. Sean Tollinson out there for his second inning of relief. Did walk Suzuki in the sixth inning. Escobar, Santana, and Dozier here in the Twin Seven. That's cracked to right field, and Eduardo Escobar starts the seventh inning with a single to right. And we'll see what Santana is asked to do here. Escobar very quick. He's one of these hitters stands right on top of the plate. That ball may be in middle end, but watch him open up quickly. Got the barrel of the bat out quickly and lined it into right field. Continues to hit. Possible bunning situation here for Santana. Beltre is already in on the grass at third.
and has walked and struck out. Beltre walking toward home plate. And now if the throw goes to first base, Beltre was no more than 50 feet from home plate. Now he's walking back. Well, Beltre is going to come in. You know what? Santana's got to bunt that ball toward Moreland because Moreland is going to take him a little longer to get there because he's holding on the runner. Outside a ball. And it's the pitcher's responsibility to charge in and then also take that first base line. And Beltre is coming in as hard as he is. What they're trying to do is take the bunt away. Santana. The ball one. And now ball two. And you have to throw a strike <laughs> if they're going to give you an out. Torino's walked Suzuki in the sixth inning. Barbara going through signs at third base. See if they let him swing away here. It's probably a fastball. Took a strike, two and one. You got Beltre, a gold glove winning third baseman who is at the point the ball is crossing home plate or the home plate area, no more than 40 feet from home plate. Right. And you've got a left handed throwing first baseman in Moreland. This is not an ideal bunting situation. Time called. Escobar, I think, had something in his eye. Yes, if he bunts, it's probably going to have to be a really good bunt to work. And that's a really good bunt. That yeah, is. That's all you wanted to do. Somewhere between yep. the mound and first base. That's it. You know, Moreland is, he's not that quickest coming off that bag. So, as I mentioned, it's a pitcher's responsibility to get over there. So, a great bunt right there by Santana, his first bunt on the season. You know, Beltre breathing down your neck, just laying down the first baseline. That's the only play they had right there. So, a good bunt by Danny Santana. Rangers got the run after a bunt single, and now the Twins hope to answer back after a sacrifice bunt. You know, that's good to see. Now, Guardy's talking to Santana right there, but you know, how many young kids have we come up that are were unable to bunt? That was a nice bunt right there. Got the job done. And now Dozier. Opening double in the first inning was left at third base. And he takes strike one. Since then, a fly ball to center and a ground ball to second. With two shots at getting this game tied up, with two of their better hitters, Dozier and Maurer. Wrapped to third, and Beltre throws to first. Escobar should have run right toward him and run around him and see if he'd have tried for the tag again. Ron Washington coming out. Like he'll bring in a lefty to face Joe. Cox was warming up. We assume it will be him. It will be Neil Cox, veteran left hander, coming in to face Maurer with the tying run at second and two outs.
promised you earlier in the game. We have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag North Fan Photo. A chance to be shown in an upcoming broadcast. Hey, Don. Brought to you by AT&T. Drew Bauer will face left-hander Neil Cotts. Uh, he faced Neil Cotts here on Monday night, able to get a base hit off of him in the eighth inning. Numbers on Cotts making his 25th relief appearance. Here on Monday night, he worked an inning and a third, gave up, excuse me, through 20 pitches, 15 for strikes. Only allowed one hit, and that was a Mauer single. And that's what the Twins need here. A base hit to the outfield should tie the game. Our speedy runner at second base. Power over three, a couple of ground outs to second, the fly to left. Little bit up, ball one. Overpowering fastball of 89. Pretty big breaking ball. Quick breaking ball from Potts. One and one to Mauer. Breaking ball very high. Two and one. That's in his second season with the Rangers. Had the Tommy John surgery in 2009. And missed him 2010 and 11. Santana hoping that his bunt will lead to the tying run. And kicks away and Escobar moves up 90 feet. A wild pitch. And now three and one to Mauer. And for Cox, his second wild pitch of the year. It's a hard breaking ball, a little slider that bounces over the glove. Escobar at third and two away. Three and two. Well, remember that hard cutter up in the zone. Joe swung through it. Him out. And Maurer strikes out. Escobar left at third. It's still one to nothing.
with this update. Twins and Texas wrap up their four-game series tomorrow afternoon at Target Field for the Rangers. Nick Martinez on the mound. The Twins, Connor, with Samuel Duduno will be on the air tomorrow. Twins live at 11.30 in the morning. First pitch follows at 12.10. Let's head back to Dick and Bert. Tom, quick turnaround and ending a quick four-game homestand. Let's take a look at Mauer's at bat. Well, Neil Cox against Mauer. A high breaking ball just missed. And then he got the strike to even the count to one and one. Missed with the high fastball. And then the wild pitch allowed Escobar to get the third. And then that high cutter. And then, wow, pitcher's pitch right there. Neil Cox, a strikeout pitcher. Got a big strike out there, right there for the Rangers. Brooknet Odor will lead off the eighth for Texas. And Odor making his first plate appearance. Elvis Andres was ejected after his ground out in the sixth inning. One strike from Fieldbar. To Caleb. Steps off the mound on the flat ground. Something we saw Kenny Rogers do all yep. the time. Not a bad idea. You Must have be those left handers. <laughs> but you've got plenty of time. Right. The runner's not going to beat you there. Why not throw from level ground? Well, yeah, you want to get your feet planted, and also if you have time, like Caleb did right there, you know, you do a little crow hop, make sure you're good, make a good throw. We saw Correa the other night come in and feel the ball and then throw wildly to first base right there for the first down. Right? Defensive play by Caleb. One down, Mitch Moreland the batter. Inside ball one. Toronto walked off the Tampa Bay Rays. And the frustration continues for Tampa Bay. Toronto's on fire. That's nine in a row for Toronto. And that's nine games behind that the Rays are to the Jays. And, uh, won't be too much longer, and the David Price trade talks will really start heating up. One and one. And Moreland takes a strike. One and two. It's going to be an interesting trade market as we get. Uh, Couple months down the road toward the end of July. Jeff Samarja of the Cubs will be a great addition to a contending team in the pitching department. Price might be dealt. Well, Samarja should go to Milwaukee. He and Matt Garza. <laughs> Reunited well, again. You know, you say that jokingly, but the Brewers have been pretty proactive when it comes to yes, picking up uh, a few years ago with CC Sabathia. If the Brewers are still in it. Nine games above 500, leading the Orioles tonight. One and two to Moreland. Matt Ferrer hanging around that mound out in the bullpen. Busted his bat. What a great sound. <laughs> Weekly to Mauer. Two down. Got in the kitchen right there, Moreland. Now Adrian Beltre will face a different pitcher. Gardenhire coming out. Neil Fielbar did a good job. He struck out two to end the seventh and then retired the first two batters here in the eighth. Good outing for Thielbar and with two gone and Beltre coming to the plate, it'll be Matt Guerrero.
Chargers up one to nothing. If you uh, want to have your kids tell us why they love Twins mascot TC, you'll uh, participate with a chance to take part in a special event at Target Field Sunday, June 8th. Email 100 words or less to I love TC at twinsbaseball.com for your chance to win. Matt Guerrero against Adrian Beltre. Ball one. Adrian Belt Beltre four for nine lifetime against Matt Guerrero. Matt making his seventh relief appearance since being called up on May 7th. That's a fair ball. Nunez from foul territory fires across. Good play. It took two hops to get there, but Nunez with a long throw throws out Beltre. Again tonight, stay with us after the game for Twins Live presented by Century Link. We'll show you how the Rangers manufactured a run in the seventh inning. We'll take you through a great pitcher's duel between Joe Saunders and Kyle Gibson, who continues to sparkle at home. And we'll hear from the manager, Rod and Garden. I are guys, we need a little more magic just like last night. Trevor Plouf will uh, try to provide a magic wand here. Strike at the knees. It'll be Plouf, Arce, and Willingham in the eighth inning. Blue hitting just 216 against lefties this year. One and one. You know, Matt Guerrero threw two pitches. I think a couple times last year, it was Casey Fiend who threw one or two pitches, got the win. So, okay. It's, uh, the vibes are there. Hard on the ground to Sardinas. One away. Bring up Arcia. Arcia one for three. Punched a single to left. He's kind of fisted a soft line drive past Beltre back in the third inning. Fly to center. And Martin comes in for out number two. The quick outs here in the eighth, and we'll see if the Rangers let it ride or make a pitching change. Here comes Wash. They're going to make a pitching change to bring a right hander in to face Josh Willingham. So far, so good for the relievers of the Rangers. Dolan said an inning and two thirds. Hots come in. 
ended up striking out Mauer and gets the first two outs here in the eighth. And Jason Frazier trying to get the final out of the eighth. Well, let's get caught up here as a pitcher's duel. Kyle Gibson, six shutout innings. No walks, four strikeouts. And Joe Saunders equaled those zeros in five innings. Gave up a couple walks, six strikeouts. The only run came off the bat of Sardinas as he drove in a run for the only run of the ball game. Martin scored after he stole second in the seventh inning. One nothing ball game. Texas up. Frazier will come in to try to get the final out of the eighth inning. It'll be Josh Willingham hitting. Yeah, Frazier worked here on Monday night through 11 pitches, nine for strikes. A shot out in it. Willingham one for two with a walk. Just missed hitting his first home run of the year in the sixth inning. He hit it to the deepest part of the park. And Martin hauled it in in front of the 411 foot sign. Frazier at 36 years old, still a fastball in the low 90s, hard slider and a changeup in his second season with the Rangers. Most of his career with the Toronto Blue Jays. Off the plate with a fastball. Rangers out hitting the Twins 8 to 6. Frazier's given up one home run in 16 and two thirds innings. There's Breaking ball off the plate. There's a slider. You know, I, I think to save us uh, time over the course of the rest of the season, let's just tell about a team that doesn't have a good bullpen because everybody's got a good bullpen now, including the Rangers. Three and zero. Oh. That fastball just missing. I bet we've said it about every team that the Twins have played. That's where the game has changed. You know, starters go five, six innings, and then you turn it over to a good bullpen. There's seven, eight guys out there. Some of these teams. Three and zero oh to Willingham. See if he's green lighted here. Pretty good bet that he is. It's a breaking ball. For a strike. Frazier, the veteran, knows that he probably has a green light. And he dropped a little breaking ball over for a strike. Pretty good numbers ahead in the count. And what's the count now? Three and one. Very good. And he took ball four. Get Suzuki to the plate with the tying run at first. And we're going to have a runner, and it's going to be Chris. 
Chris Parmalee. This is again where the substitution, the scratching of Aaron Hicks. About an hour and a half before game time comes into play, the Twins would have had Danny Santana available to them as a pinch runner, but instead Santana had to start the ball game in center field for Hicks. So Parmalee will run for Willingham, and Parmalee is faster than Willingham, but he's not nearly as fast as Santana. Suzuki has 10 of those. Ranger outfield in I guess what you'd call no doubles defense. They're playing about across the way, about five yards deeper than they would normally. In the dirt, one and one. I'm thinking more of triple would score probably. <laughs> but he's our pinch runner. <laughs> the options would be Kubel, Parmalee, or Pinto. I'm replacing a fire engine for an ambulance. Let's see if he can, uh, Parmalee can turn the sirens on here. Two and one, a breaking pitch, not close. You know, if he walks uh, Suzuki, Parmalee's got a better chance to score on a double at second base. And Nuno's on deck. He got the big hit last night that tied the game. Come on. Two and one. Beltre gobbles up the second hop. The wrong guy to hit it to. He did it last night with a different result. We head to the ninth inning and still one nothing. Guerrero got the last out at the top of the eighth inning and he'll try to set the Rangers down quickly here in the top of the ninth and see if the Twins can have back to back walk off wins against Texas. Alex Rios will lead off the ninth, then Michael Choice and Leonis Martin.
down and in ball one. Yeah, Reels against Matt Guerrero eight hits and 22 at bats. Normally in the game and left. Fly ball to right. And Arcia comes in. One down. Our soup.com trivia question. I think the answer has got to be Billy Martin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. One year with the Twins. Uh, he was here in 1969 with the Twins. I missed him in 1970. And then when I got traded over, you know, I believe he was there in 75, I believe. I got traded over in 76. To the Rangers. And an intermediate stop with the Tigers. Martin did. Bounced to third. Nunez gets the hot ground ball and fires off target. Maurer is able to keep that right foot on the bag. Two down. You know, Joe's done a good job over there. He's yet to commit an error, but he's done a very good job. With, I think every night we see him doing better, going to his right, going to his left. That play right there, that's not easy to try to keep your foot on the bag. And then try to reach out and make that uh, nice play. Don't you get the sense that he just looks more comfortable over there, which, yeah. of course, everyone assumed would happen. Well, he's such a good athlete that you know he could play anywhere, really. You know, he's, he could even probably pitch. I was going to ask whether he could <laughs> be a pitcher. <laughs> One and zero. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you were going to ask. Because I beat you to it. Routine with two hits. It was a bunt single. That led to the one run scored in the game. There's Soria. Missed a save opportunity last night. Routine with a bunt single. He stole second. And then Sardinas just flared one down the line out of Willingham's range. And that scored the run in the seventh inning. Yeah, Burton fell behind, came in with a fastball that Suzuki wanted away, and too much of the plate. And Sardinas got the RBI single. Chopped up the right side. Tonight there's been a walk-off win in Toronto on the south side of Chicago. The Twins will try to pull one off here in Minnesota. Earned and celebrated. Liner to left field. Get down. Down for a hit. Suzuki heading around third. He's coming in. Aaron Hicks is the walk-off winner today. It's the last word. The closing act. The final step. The whole point. We don't remember the start. We never forget the finish. Little number. Soria fumbles it. And the Twins win the game. Santana off the end of the bat. Becomes a game. Nunez before that delivered a big RBI single to tie the game. 
Santana finished it with the number toward the mound. Both batters are scheduled to hit here in the ninth inning. Nunez, Escobar, and Santana with Kubel and Pinto available on the bench. And Joaquin Soria back out there. The loser in last night's ball game, it was Nunez that got the base hit that tied the game off of Soria, making his 19th relief appearance. Threw a lot of pitches in that uh, ninth inning, 28 pitches total in two thirds of an inning. First pitch a strike to Nunez. Ball. Sorry, excellent control. Only three walks, one intentional in 17 and a third innings. Stroke foul. You mentioned it last night. The Twins did not use Jason Kubel as a pinch hitter. He's 0 for 11 against Soria, and he realistically is the only option here. Pinto is the backup catcher, probably won't be used. Kubel doesn't have a helmet or a bat in hand. Taken outside, two and two. Garcia. Thunderous double off the top of the fence in right center the start of the rally last night. Breaking ball at 66 miles per hour and it freezes. Nunez one away. Well, we saw that a couple times last night. Soria with that big slow curveball. A curveball that just keeps spinning. Looking at a breaking pitch at 76, and you figure, well, that's as slow as it can possibly go. And then he throws a slower one, 10 miles per hour slower. Here's Escobar. Fastball strike one. Escobar singled to right, got as far as third base. The Twins obviously have been without a clutch hit in the ball game yet tonight. Foul back two strikes. Nick Martinez going for the Rangers, Samuel Deduno for the Twins, and our Century Link linked to what's next. Yeah, Martinez just making his fifth major league start. Started the season in the bullpen, but because of injuries, he's now a starter. Three pitches, and Escobar is gone. Two down. Two quick strikeouts for Soria. Had a chance this afternoon to sit down with Glenn Perkins and talk to him about his career and everything. And I brought up the point, you know, when when you have that, you know, bad outing and you end up blowing the save, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to get back and write it back out there. And that's what Sori is doing here tonight. Not fooling around. Eight pitches, six strikes, two strikeouts, and now Santana will hit the ball right off the end of his bat. What turned out to be the game winning at bat. Soria shaves the outside corner, strike one. Santana 0 for 1 with a walk and a sacrifice bunt. Look at the numbers for Soria against the Twins. He's been outstanding. Oh, what a catch by Beltre. He caught it on the fly with Santana hitting a rocket. Very likely, had it gotten by Beltre, it would have been a double. Given where Chu is playing Santana as it is, the Twins are shut out one to nothing. Yeah, Santana can't hit it any harder, but Beltre diving to his left and just in case threw it across the diamond. Well, the Twins won a one run game last night. Tonight, Anthony LaPanta, the Twins shut out for just the third time this year. It's only the second time they've lost a one run game at home. The Rangers beat them 1 0. Show you how Joe Saunders shut down the Twins. We'll look at another solid start for Kyle Gibson. And we'll hear from Rod Gardner. All coming up next on Twins Live. <laughs> 